Now, one of the connectivity technologies that I find so fascinating is a uh, is, is a data distribution uh, service or, or, or DDS, and uh, I'm like still trying to 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 wrap my head around uh, all the concepts of DDS. But can you like give us a, a, a like sort of like a, a very a, a brief explanation of what TDS really is? Yeah. So I've been working hard on trying to make this more understandable to people <laughs> because if you read the standard, which is I don't know how many hundreds of pages <laughs> of yeah. dense technical stuff, it, it talks about things like a global data space. Um, if you have to put DDS into a box that you can understand, think of it as a very intelligent distributed shared memory. Uh, but the way I like to explain that makes more sense, DDS is a virtual, it, it, it gives you the virtual environment that is a, a fiction, it's not true, but a fiction it seems like all, all the data in the entire system is right. If you're writing an algorithm, all the data is in your local memory. It's in, it's in your algorithm. If you're writing a sensor, it's writing, you know, all the data is in, this, is in the sensor. I can write to that data and everybody else gets it. If you're writing an actuator or some other thing and you need data, it's right there in your local memory. And so it, it looks like all the data and we have systems, you know, 300,000 devices, uh, you know, a whole fleet of autonomous vehicles that have LIDARs and radars and operators uh, that are monitoring the system. If you're one of those operators, all the data of the entire system is right there in your algorithm or in your, in your workstation display. Um, it's not true, it's not possible but it acts that way. And so you're just, as an application developer, are reading and writing what looks like local memory. Um, that's DDS. So people think it's published, subscribe. Well, it sort of is, but it also supports all the other patterns. It supports queuing and it supports request reply. And it's just not true that it's only published. What's, what's important about it is it's all about the data. The data, you're, it's all right there for you. And the way it really works, okay, it looks yeah. like it's all there. It's not really all there. If you, for instance, need to read something 100 times a second and you want it to be in your data, in reality, it's living on devices all over the place. You just tell DDS, okay, I need this updated 100 times a second. And here's what it is. Here's the data. And DDS will go out and find anything that might be able to produce that for you and give the specification. And the specification can be pretty complicated. It's not just 100 times a second. For instance, I want to know I'm building an autonomous vehicle. I want to know anything within 200 meters of me that's moving towards me at more than two meters a second. That's my specification, right? Mm -hmm. And I can send that to all the sensors on my vehicle or even someday to the cameras on the street or whatever. Um, and anybody that has that information now knows that I want it. And not, they don't, they don't, their application doesn't know, their application is just writing what they know into memory also. But the DDS on their application now knows that I want it and it will send it to mine and it will get it to mine guaranteed exactly to be in my memory when I'm going to go read it a hundredth of a second later. <laughs> and so I go and I read it and I say, oh, there's a pedestrian that's walking across the walk, crosswalk in front of me at more than two meters a second. And it's coming towards, you know, towards me might be some collision path or something. I, I now know that's there and then I can do something about it. So that's, that's the magic of DDS. It's finding things in the, in the data space and delivering it to you. That's why data dis distribution survey, it, it, I, if I could rename it, it'd be, you know, data centric architecture. It really is data centricity that's important, much more than distribution and certainly much more than publish subscribe. It's really getting the data you need in the right place at the right time. Oh, yeah. That's what DDS does. Um, nothing else does anything close to it. Every, every other technology has the concept of active things, clients and servers. The data lives on the server. You're a client. You get yeah. it from the server. Or messages. You send messages. Where do you send messages? Well, you send it to some active thing, either another another application or you send messages to a queue, uh, something that has to exist, right? One of the nice things about having the data in my own memory, I don't have to know you exist. 
I don't know anything else exists. I just read it and write it out of my own memory. Now, if I ask for it 100 times a second and it doesn't show up, that's an error condition. I don't know. I don't, I don't have to even know why it didn't show up, although there are ways to find that out. But, um, you know, the, the condition is the data is not there. There's a failure in some form. I mean, the communications are down or there's no sensor out there or, uh, you know, maybe nothing ever even matched my specification. Um, all of those things are, are errors, but they're not something I can start reading it immediately nothing happens there's nothing there uh, I know that that's not working it, it, ha it also has a very interesting trick of something called liveliness cool. so if if I know for instance I'm running an airport and there's nine approach regions to my airport and there's you know multiple radars or whatever the sensors are watching for airplanes coming into my airport in all nine of those regions uh, I can say I need liveliness guarantees on all nine regions um, meaning that if there's no data from them, it doesn't mean the radar's down. It means there's no data. And what DDS is doing then, and, and when you say you're lively, you should say, you know, like I need you DDS to guarantee that this data is not more than a tenth of a second old, essentially. And now DDS is going to, you know, if, if that radar isn't writing data every tenth of a second, even if there's nothing in that data, or nothing I care about in that data. Maybe I only want airplanes within five miles uh, descending and coming towards me, right? That's all I care about below some altitude. Yeah. Uh, even if there's nothing there, at least I know it's alive. I know the radar is working. It's very different to have no plane there and have no sensor there. It's a very, very different condition. So DDS handles a lot of the complexities of interactions between all of these systems uh, much easier, much more easily because it has a uh, uh, an ability to be data centric. Oh yeah, that makes makes a lot of sense actually because I I, I, I remember reading somewhere where it was saying uh, with DDS is like you are accessing data from the future as opposed to uh, something like accessing data from a relation and relational database where you are accessing data from the past. Right. So yeah, a database is also a data centric architecture, but all the data is old. Yeah. Uh, so a database has, you know, I mean, a database is, is become absolutely required for every, every business system. You wouldn't dream of building an auto parts store without a database. You wouldn't dream of building a one person food truck without a database, yeah, right? Of course. <laughs> you know, I suppose you could do it, but you know, but it's all stored data. So I can search my auto parts store for, you know, alternators for a 20, 2005 Chevy, right? Yeah. You know, how much they cost and when do I have any inventory? That's, that's called a slice, right? You, you, yeah. you search for that. And then you can say things like, well, there's none. Then you can do things with it, like, uh, I don't know, add it to a list of a, a cart or see if, uh, if I don't have any when they're going to ship. All those kinds of things can be done with that slice. My slice with the airport is also a slice, but it's future information. Because yeah. that the data for the parts has to already be in your database when you search. But I can search for you know, airplanes within five miles below 5,000 feet descending and coming towards me in the future. Yeah. And if one of those shows up, I need to know about it in 10th of a second. Well, that's, that's also a slice, but it's a slice that hasn't happened yet. Right. Really, it's very similar to a future database. Yeah, that's, that's very interesting. 